Praise the Lord and welcome to HUR at Home Inspiration. I'm Jackie Gales Webb and every Sunday we bring to you some outstanding individuals to talk about faith and how it plays in our everyday lives. I pray that you're enjoying this beautiful weather that we're having here in Washington, DC, but please remember that we're still in the pandemic. Remember to wear your mask, continue to social dis distance, and if you haven't gotten it already, please get your vaccine. Thank you so, so much for your caution and your care, because we want you back here next Sunday <laughs> for HUR at Home Inspiration. Hello, Mr. Clint Keener. Charles Keener is with us. You can say hello in the chat, and we will definitely make sure that you, if you have a question, get your question answered or your comment made here during our conversation. Today we have an outstanding individual in the Washington metropolitan area and on the national scene. Uh, and we also have a gospel artist who is going to do a performance April the 16th for Washington Performing Arts Society, uh, actually Washington Performing Arts. And if you hold on, keep with us through the performance, you will see instructions for you our very special guest to receive a 50% discount on tickets to see this wonderful Washington Performing Arts performance. So stay with us, we're going to give you that discount. As the Twin Cities of Minnesota await a verdict in the Derek Chauvin trial, that that's the trial where the jury's gonna decide whether or not Chauvin's knee on George Floyd's neck caused his death, Minnesota, West St. Paul, Minnesota says that a Black Lives Matter sign violates multiple portions of the city code and that this sign that's on a large fence must come down. A spokesman for the city said that in an email, he said that officials had received multiple complaints about the non-compliance of the sign on this large fence and that it breaches a part of the city code. My first guest has a church that has a Black Lives Matter sign in front of it. Please welcome Reverend Dr. Wallace Charles Smith, Senior Minister of Shiloh Baptist Church of Washington, DC. Welcome. Well, thank you, Jackie. I appreciate that. It's always, you've so, been so kind to our church over the years and it's always good to connect with you. Well, you know, you have one of the finest music ministries in the city. So, of course, yes. I am very connected with your wonderful congregation and your wonderful Thank music you. ministry. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Shiloh was founded amidst the turmoil of the civil rights, uh, excuse me, the Civil War, rather, mm -hmm. in 1863 by 21 former slaves who left Fredericksburg, Virginia. Quite a history. Mm -hmm. Yes. And... You are right there in the middle of one of the most prosperous parts <laughs> of Washington, D.C. right now. And mm -hmm. I have to ask you, how has gentrification been for Shiloh Baptist Church on 9th and P Northwest? OK, thank you for the question. Well, it's been a challenge. Um, so for all intents and purposes, we're not a neighborhood church anymore. Uh, there are probably less than a handful of members that can actually walk to the church. Most of our members are upper Northwest and Prince George's County in Virginia. Uh, so, and unfortunately the gentrification thing has driven prices up. And so you might say, well, hey, that's a good thing. But what it has done is that, you know, our grandparents uh, who either were renters or maybe owned their own houses, uh, the tax rate has gone up so much now that they're paying more in taxes than they, than they used to pay, pay in mortgage. They may, may have owned their homes for the last 20 years, but they now find themselves economically unable to keep up and to stay in their ancestral homes. Uh, wow. Yeah, Arlo but, continues to do so much in the community despite 
the what's how the area is changing around it. Mm-hmm. Um, you you have, as I said earlier, a Black Lives Matter sign in front of the church. Have you had any problems with that sign as other churches have had in the past? No, uh, we have not, and grateful for that. Although I'm aware that um, the United Methodist Church um, down on uh, 11th Street, they, they were certainly featured in the paper, as was Metropolitan AME. Uh, but we're just a little bit north of the, uh, you know, sort of the traditional downtown area. So the protesters didn't get up as far as we. Uh, but no, the Black Lives Matter sign is an indication of what Shiloh has been and done for uh, well, for better than a century now. Um, you mentioned the 21 former slaves. Quite a story there that was when Fredericksburg, and that's where uh, our ancestors came from, when Fredericksburg fell to the Union Army, uh, there was quite a fear amongst the Union that uh, one of their big priorities was to take Fredericksburg back. So the Union Army determined that all the freedmen, they would escort uh, north to Washington, D.C. and protect them on the route. And so amongst that, that caravan was, was our founders, 21 slaves, former slaves. Hmm. Uh, and uh, if you come to visit Shiloh, uh, down in the basement of our church, we have the original uh, communion set that the founders um, brought with them from Fredericksburg, as well as a, uh, a washing bowl, for washing hands for the service. And we still use the, uh, the hand washing bowl. Uh, so the, the idea of justice goes way back to our very roots. And then as you move forward, uh, Milton Waldron, who was our third pastor, uh, was one of the founders of the NAACP. Wow. Uh, and uh, he instigated uh, what seems strange now, but back in his time, which was the late um, 1800s, he institute, instituted a, uh, uh, an alley ministry. And the alley ministry was because there were so many impoverished people literally living in the alleys. I guess the best analogy would be in some parts of so-called third world countries where you see people camped out in whatever spaces, or maybe tin shacks that they've erected. Well, that was the, the scene in Washington. And Dr. Walter addressed that. Uh, and then after Dr. Walter came Earl Harrison, legendary pastor and preacher, one of the founders of the uh, Progressive National Baptist Convention. And uh, and during the riots, uh, back after Dr. King's death, uh, Dr. Harrison uh, walked in the streets and uh, pleaded for calm for those who were loose, uh, uh, trying to perform arson and, and looting and all of that. And so he got a tremendous amount of credibility in the community because he was not afraid to, to deal with these, uh, these challenges. Um, Remarkable history, and and we're going to talk about Shiloh now and what you're doing as far as social justice. You actually have a social justice ministry, but first I want to mention that uh, Luana Hatcher is with us. Uh, She says, double hallelujah, praise, praises go up, blessings come down, amen. Amen. Uh, Kenyon McAfee, greetings, my sister Jackie, and welcome Reverend Dr. Wallace Charles Smith. Uh, Luana Hatcher is with us. Greetings from Patterson, New Jersey. Black Lives Matter signs painted on the street signs everywhere. Uh, Tootsie Caldwell says good evening. And Angela Trapp says hello, Reverend Wallace. I was a member of Shiloh while attending Howard University. And my husband and I were married by the late Reverend Justice Reeves. Oh, how nice. We now live in Atlanta, but we love Shiloh. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That's so Now, sweet. everybody, please, as I said earlier, coming up, we're going to give you a code so that you can get 50% off on tickets to uh, a Washington Performing Arts performance by our next guest, who I'm going to bring on right now, Damian Sneed, who's also an alum of Howard University. 
Damien, hello. Hello, hello. How are you? Good, good. Welcome, welcome. I'm so honored to be here. Um, every time I get a chance, I tune into your show. And definitely being a Howard University alum, I'm honored to be here. <clears throat> I'm very familiar with Shiloh Baptist Church as well. A lot of my friends uh, attend there now, are on staff there, and also have attended there uh, while I was a student at Howard University as well. Great yeah, historic man. worship center. Mm -hmm. Damien, Great how has this year of coronavirus and social justice awakening been for you? Uh, it's been very interesting. Everything that's happened in the past 12 months with me not being able to go on tour uh, and also with the death of George Floyd. I know now we're dealing with the court case. Uh, that's something I've tried to express myself musically as an artist, I believe as a creative uh, and a person that God has given the platform to express myself uh, musically. Uh, it's a calling that I have to fulfill uh, as, and a God to glorify, but to use my voice, to use my music, uh, to be able to speak to that. That's why one of the songs on my uh, recording, Damien Seen Unplugged, is the familiar tune, Oh Freedom. Before I'd be a slave, mm -hmm. I'd be buried in my grave. So uh, I, too, am standing on the shoulders of my ancestors, uh, standing on the shoulders of those who have paved the way with the civil rights movement uh, for me to have a voice, uh, for us to be able to speak freely here uh, about issues of social justice, reconciliation, protest, those types of issues. So uh, just trying to continue to press forward so that we can be a beacon of light and hope to others while inspiring them to know that God will be there with them, even uh, with marginalization, mm -hmm. even with uh, social issues and woes that we see constantly. You know, my aunt who's watching now here in Augusta, Georgia, I'm at home in Georgia, she's 82. And she said to me, uh, Damien, you know, I thought that growing up, it was a difficult time. But she said now some of the things that we are facing here in America seem to be even more difficult than the way it was for me growing up as a little girl drinking from a colored fountain. Mm. Wow. Wow. What? How profound and, and mm. how true. You know, I played your song, Oh Freedom, this morning on WHUR. And that song has great significance for me because when I was a... Um, uh, sophomore and no, a freshman, sophomore and junior at Emerson College in Boston, Massachusetts. I had a radio show on the college radio station, and that song, not sung by you, but sung by somebody else, opened my show every time I was on. Oh, before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. So, thank you so much for re recording that song and bringing it back, Pastor. Yes. You, you, yes, you have a social justice ministry. Yes, Shiloh. What what is that? Okay, well, social justice ministry is a is one that's built on the belief that at the heart of the message of both Old and New Testament is the idea that God is uh, in the business of freeing people. Uh, one of the ways I like to put it is that uh, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego story. <laughs> God's not outside the furnace putting people in. God's inside the furnace getting people out. Uh, so our social justice ministry uh, is several fold. We do um, uh, legis uh, try to encourage legislation with letter writing campaigns, with protests, uh, joining in important marches. Uh, we try to get information out uh, and uh, on Sunday morning in the uh, worship service, uh, you hear my uh, sermons laced with the themes that my brother was just talking about a minute ago, laced with the themes of justice. Uh, now, you know, one or two every now and then will say, oh, I mean, you shouldn't, shouldn't beat up on Donald Trump. Well, as, as history has proven, he needs to be beaten up on. <laughs> but, but, you know, justice... And, you know, some churches, you know, you want to talk about, well, you shouldn't uh, preach politics from the pulpit. Well, unfortunately, that's a notion that came into the black church probably somewhere in the 50s when we first started having access to white seminaries that had reactionary professors. Uh, but when we were still dealing with the, the, the challenges of Jim Crow in the South, we were for sure. Uh, churches that understood that God is in the freeing, not the uh, enslaving business. So social justice ministry says, I try and keep before the congregation 
as much as possible that this is um, so absolutely at the heart of our, our teaching about the gospel that when God made his one of his earliest proclamations in history, it was to bring uh, Israel out of Egypt. And then when Jesus uh, began his ministry, he chose a pure liberation text um, from uh, uh, Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach good news to the poor, uh, freedom to the captives, and the set at liberty those who are bruised. So we take those two scriptures as, as the twin pillars that we build our social justice ministry on. Well, I'm, I'm going to throw this question out to both of you, uh, uh, Pastor first and then Damien as, as an artist, um, and, and Pastor, of course, as a, a leader of a church. If this Chauvin trial goes in a way that's going to really upset a whole lot of people, what can ministry do? What can the church do? And what can artists do to, I don't know whether the word is console or help uh, people to who are upset, who are, might be upset if this trial turns out in a way that is very upsetting? Yeah, that's a great question. It's, uh, uh, it really is uh, grief control I and mean, grief management. And a lot of times we can read through the Psalms and not realize that a substantial portion of the Psalms are what we call lament Psalms, when there was some tragedy in the, in the nation of Israel. They, they sang these songs as comfort. Uh, and so we will comfort and we will continue to preach justice and we will decry uh, those who may have um, promoted certainly an unfair uh, um, judgment in the Chauvin case. But yeah, we will not be silent, that's for sure. But let's, let's hope it doesn't come to that. Let's hope that the jury will do the right thing. Damien? Yes, one of the things about uh, the music of the church, particularly the music of the African-American church experience and the African-American diasporic cultural uh, uh, experience, especially with liturgy, is that our music uh, spoke to and still speaks to whatever social issues we're having. So the voice, uh, people like Reverend Smith and Shiloh Baptist Church that have been around uh, during all of these transitions, it always speaks to speak prophetically to us as a people, but to all people in the struggle, all the way from the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, uh, in the book of Exodus, the book of the coming out, the book of deliverance, God wanted to liberate and free his people. And we understand even with the uh, with the salvific plan of salvation, that's God's uh, love for us that he wants to free us. So the music, the music itself, the gospel, uh, the music of the civil rights era, things like ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, uh, things like I've been buked, but I've been scorned, those songs, uh, they actually do something, you feel it in your physical body. It's not just uh, something that we've worked up emotionally, culturally, but I really believe it's the power of God through the precious gift of his Holy Spirit that we can feel life in those songs. It's those songs that the Bible talks about in the New Testament that are songs in the night. They're ministering angels. Uh, you know, when you watch a film, uh, my master's degree is in film scoring, and you look at the power of a film score when you're looking at imagery of uh, people being hosed down with uh, water and people uh, having dogs chase them. But something about our music, something about our music allows people to feel and understand, because music is a universal language, uh, these, these feelings and this sense of wanting to be free. And I believe it's a time now for artists, uh, gospel, no matter what genre they are, to begin to come together globally, because now we're understanding, you know, with the young people uh, that have been held back uh, in these detention camps, I'll say, you know, who are immigrants, uh, people in, in Eastern Europe and people in Africa that are going through so many uh, diverse uh, tribulations and the vicissitudes of life. I believe the music working together with the voice of the church and the voice of uh, the preacher, the pastor, if we don't forget where we've come from, because how can we move forward if we don't forget? So you highlighting now uh, Shiloh and their, their contribution to history being one of the oldest uh, uh, religious institutions in Washington, D.C. Uh, and, you know, Howard University being one of those institutions which was created to train ministers and to train people to go out. I believe we can come together, even if people aren't religious and even if they 
as I uh, believe in Jesus, even if the disclaimer that they don't believe that. I believe we can come together with a positive message and allow the music to be ameliorating and allow it to minister right well where people are. And I think we will see a better tomorrow. We will see a brighter future. And we will see uh, not just the division of polity and the division of, you know, this is my denomination, this is how I worship, and this is what I do, but we'll be able to come together and understand historically where we've been, to be able to not be in denial with where we are, and then to be able to move forward positively in the future with an impact. Well said. Gospel artist Philip Carter's artist. There's great conversation going on here. Margaret Anderson, thank you, Pastor Smith, for being on the front line of the issues that confront us. Shirley L. Yates is watching. Yvette Washington says, a very historic church, Pastor. Thank you for your service, Dr. Wallace Smith. And Kenyon McAfee, welcome my brother Damien Sneed. Oh, freedom. Great conversation. Amen. Damien is going to, uh, we're going to talk now about his performance with Washington Performing Arts. And I want to um, let everybody know, get your pencil ready or because I'm going to give you a code and instructions so you can get 50% off on the tickets for the Washington Performing Arts performance. Damien, what's going to go ha happen on uh, April the 16th? This is exciting. For me, it's like a reunion with some of my original singers. I decided to go back and re-record uh, music, original music that I wrote uh, from the beginning, from my very first recording at Columbia University after leaving Howard when I moved to New York City. Uh, and I was joined by some of my friends who are artists in their own right, uh, Sinead Campbell, Mattia Washington, Tiffany Stevenson, Lenny Smith. They all have Grammy Awards and prizes, and uh, they have such a sense of humility. And uh, we were joined by a good friend of mine uh, from the Sunday Best family. I was music director of Sunday Best, uh, I believe season four. And uh, she won, I believe it was season seven or eight, don't quote me, but her name is Tasha Page Lockhart. And it was really, really amazing uh, just for us to come together uh, during the pandemic uh, on the stage of the historic Lincoln Theater. And I believe it's gonna be something, uh, one of the things I, I picked up from my men mentors, the Clark sisters, Karen Clark Sheard and Twinkie Clark, you know, went to Howard, they always told me that you have to, their mother, Maddie Moss Clark, told them you have to have something for everybody. So I have some traditional gospel music on there. I have some uh, contemporary music. I think there's something for everyone. Uh, and just, you know, uh, I'm a person who's not put in a box. God has blessed me and allowed me to go to D.C. where I experience people like a Richard Smallwood and, and other people like you all know, Nolan Williams, people who are mm breaking the barriers and breaking the box. Uh, Thomas Tyler, you know, Shiloh, uh, another person that mentioned me, Philip Carter, who's on here, uh, people who could uh, go beyond the four walls of the church and allow uh, sacred gifts to be seen in secular places. So from writing operas to conducting symphonies to uh, working with Winston Marsalis, different genres, I decided to go back to my roots, to gospel, because I think if ever a time during this pandemic and with all the many things that we are experiencing here, I think it's a time for people to understand, uh, as one of the songs says, that God is right there by our side. No matter what uh, we're facing, you know, I'm uh, going to be completely transparent because I believe as an artist, as my mentor Winter Marsalis says, we have to bear our souls to be transparent. So right now I'm joining you from Augusta, Georgia, my hometown, where Jesse Norman is from, who also went to Howard University. But uh, me and my family are experiencing some difficult times. My cousin died this past Wednesday evening. At 11.35, I was there at the hospital with him. And then on Friday, my uncle had a stroke. And we may see in the throngs of the storm, but we know we have an anchor. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, even in the midst of that, I'm able to come here and still be transparent and know that God is using every part of the process, every part of the uh, of the walk that I'm, I'm walking with him. And even now, as I'm talking to people, I would love for all the listeners to please come out. Uh, and, and there's a 50% discount. Uh, and really in, enjoy it because we really had such a great time. One of the songs is called Broken to Minister. And uh, I'm dedicating that to my uh, my godmother, my my pastor, former pastor, the late Bishop Iona Locke, who passed during the pandemic on December 18th. Uh, we have a record label together, Lashato Earl Records, my middle name, Damien Lashato Sneed, her middle name, Iona Earl Locke. And, uh, you know, I couldn't help it. I try to keep my composure uh, and, you know, hold to the rein, so to speak. But during the recording session, I couldn't do anything but just weep uh, because sometimes there comes a point, uh, an expression, there comes a point 
when you are sharing and bearing your soul, being transparent in front of people that words can't express. Musical melodic lines and chords and progressions and modulations can't express it. The only thing that could express what my spirit felt was a tear coming from my soul, but I know that God catches every tear. And those types of uh, things being broken by God over and over keeps me uh, in a place of humility. And it keeps me in a place realizing that it's not about me. It's not about prizes. It's not about your name being in lights or receiving an award or receiving a piece of plastic or brass, you know, on a stage and someone saying you're the first prize winner or you received the award. But it's about being broken over and over, not just during resurrection season at Easter, but being broken over and over to be poured out to somebody else so they can be touched by my testimony, by what I'm dealing with, by what I'm going through. So that's something that I think people will really enjoy this coming Friday and the release of the new project, Damien Sneed Unplugged. Wow. Amen. Well, definitely our prayers for your family. Hmm. What a difficult time this has been. Uh, we have the discount uh, code up now. So for the 50% discount, you want to visit the WPA website, go to that address, WPA Sneed, hit add to cart, and then add the WHUR 50 before you check out, and it'll give you your discount. And the song um, Broken to Minister I played this morning also, beautiful, beautiful song. And thank you for mentioning Dr. Tyler at Shiloh Baptist Church. He had yes. me host a program, what was it, a couple of years ago? Yes, yeah, been about two years. Mm -hmm. And it was, they do a wonderful job at Shiloh Baptist Church, the music ministry. It um, gives you the history, the, the traditional songs and contemporary songs in a very professional and excellent way. So, you know, hats go off to Dr. Tyler and all of the music ministry there at Shiloh. Now, now, Damien, when you say show up, you want us to show up for the concert. Do you mean show up personally or is this streamed or how is this working? I'd like for them to show up virtually and behind the paywall, there's also a conversation that they can have with me. Uh, and there are other uh, videos that we recorded, one called Linger Longer with mm. uh, Michelle Fallon, who was a student, a graduate of Howard University along with me. She's over the Children of the Gospel for WPA. Mm. And uh, we had a great interview I cannot say enough, and of course, HU, but I can't say enough about how Washington, D.C. was really a place, a launching pad for me, because there's so much rich history there. There's so many wonderful people, like you mentioned, you know, Thomas Tyler, who's one of the great musicians uh, in the D.C. area and places like Shiloh, where students like myself, I'm from Augusta, Georgia, but coming to D.C., I was exposed to so much great music, uh, so much good preaching. At uh, that time, Metropolitan Baptist was also in the downtown area and Greater Mount Calvary Holy Church and Howard School of Divinity. Uh, I had a chance to play at Michigan Park Christian Church, Reverend Dr. Dolores Carpenter. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was poured into by so many great people, uh, Archbishop Owens and Co-Pastor Susie Owens and uh, Dean Richardson at Howard Rankin Chapel. Uh, you know, those experiences have really caused me to uh, continue to remain grounded uh, as the Lord has launched me out uh, into the world, into different countries in Europe. Uh, but I'm so glad that uh, this radio station, I, I think you all also come on uh, Sirius XM. I know I listen to one of the Howard stations at times on Sirius. But, you know, it's really amazing. Howard is the mecca, you know, of culture. But it's good to have this type of dialogue. Yeah. Uh, and and Dr. Uh, Reverend Smith, to have you here uh, to be able to share. Because people, I think, uh, generations to come, it's good for them to see this display of the beacon of of, of a message of history, but at the same time as you're holding up the banner and holding up the light for us to be able to follow in the footsteps. Uh, you know, if you look in the Bible, you'll see even the Chronicler, uh, first and second Chronicles in, in Psalms, it talks about uh, the chief musicians and the sons of Korah and how they would duplicate themselves. And that's one thing that I can definitely say I found in Washington, DC. There are a lot of people who duplicate themselves in younger people. You know, every four years or every year, there's a new shift of people coming. And one thing about places like Shiloh, I know my friend, Reverend Jacqueline Thomas, I believe is her name. Oh, yeah. She's yes. been with us for years. She was yes. with you all for years. But mm -hmm. places like Shiloh, those institutions, places like uh, WHUR and Howard University, you all really pour into young people. So I'm a product of the community. I'm a product of what you all do, how you all will duplicate yourselves in other young people so that we can continue to carry the torch and be a light 
uh, throughout the world. So thank you again, and thank you for this platform. Thank you, Howard. Thank you so much for being on the radio for a number of years and being consistent because that's not something you find everywhere in every city. So I'm proud to be a Howard graduate. I'm, I'm very proud to be a product of the Washington, D.C., greater uh, Washington, D.C. area, and that you all poured so much into me to help prepare me uh, and nurture the gifting and the talents that God placed inside me innately, but so that I could be polished as I stand on whatever stage the Lord takes me to. Amen. We're so honored and proud of you, Damien, the work that you've done, where you have given your ministry and how it has flourished is just wonderful. Thank you so, so much. Pastor, um, yes, we, we heard about the social justice ministry. We know that we can go to the Shiloh website and find out when you are preaching and when the services are, but is there anything else coming up that you'd like us to know and that we could participate in at Shiloh? Well, you know, throughout the year, there are two um, most prominent um, musical offerings. The Messiah is the uh, second Sunday in December, uh, mm -hmm. and that's one of our tremendously well-subscribed uh, programs. And then our very wonderful gospel choir on Palm Sunday, just two weeks ago, give their annual concert. So for music lovers, uh, those are two opportunities. And then, uh, Sister Jackie, as you said, uh, any given Sunday. We had our, our uh, young adult choir this morning. Uh, because of COVID, we only had, uh, had six strong. But man, you would have thought that there were 600 up there. <laughs> uh, so on any given Sunday, Shiloh is just a blessing. I, I tell people that uh, uh, one of the perks of pastoring that church is any given Sunday, I can hear some of the finest black music in the nation right there at Shiloh. So yeah. Yeah, I encourage people to drop by when we get back to face to face, come and see us and, and enjoy the music. I tell people, Sister Jackie, that uh, they asked me if, I, if I'm a musician. I said, no. Somebody once said, I must have a lot of music in me because none of it ever came out. But my one claim to fame, uh, uh, Brother Sneed, is that uh, I once had Nolan Williams in a class over at Howard. Uh, and uh, uh, I look back on it now, I had no idea when he was sitting there in his jeans and all that, that he'd be the, the toast of gospel music the way he is. So. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. And a, a great organizer and leader. Yes. Uh, um, he does a lot of theater. He, I, mm -hmm. I serve on the um, associates board of the Kennedy Center with him. He's one of the co-chairs with Andrea Rowan. He's doing wow. great things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, re really doing great things. Mm -hmm. And let's um, put the uh, discount code up one more time, uh, Producer Robin. Uh, Joshua Adamar turning, turn, tuning in from London, England. Great, wow. Damien Sneed. He's a great uh, musician. Yeah. Hi, Joshua. Angela Trapp. Uh, yes, Dean Richardson of Howard poured into all of us during our matriculation. We're making our ancestors proud, including the late Reverend Dr. Henry C. Gregory and the late Dr. Frederick G. Sampson. And Madeline Green, good evening, Pastor Smith. Good to see you. God bless. Stephanie Romero, yes, I'm proud of you. Damien L. Sneed. And Kisha Lavette, Broken to Minister is such a powerful song. Yes, it is. Kisha Howard tuning in from Augusta, Georgia. And uh, China Doll is with us. Thank you for sharing the discount for 50% on the performance of Damien Sneed with Tasha uh, uh, Paige Lockhart. Visit that address, hit add to cart, and apply the code WHUR50 before checkout. And once again, thank you to Washington Performing Arts for making all that possible. And thank you both for a wonderful conversation this evening. This has been excellent. I know that the performance is going to be spectacular, Damien. Damien God bless you. And Pastor, if you could leave us with a prayer. I'd be delighted. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's pray, friends. Lord God, our thanks to you for a woman who has become one of the leading lights in our city. We thank you for 
uh, Sister Jackie Gales Webb. We thank you, Lord, for uh, young Damien and for all the wisdom. And it reminds us that for those of us who came up in the civil rights era, uh, that there's a whole range of Black Lives Matter folk coming along, continuing to hold high the bloodstained banner. Lord, bless us as a community. Bless us as we work for justice. Bless us as we gather here in Howard, one of the great institutions of this nation. And Lord, we ask that you'll be with all of us as we go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Reverend Smith, Amen. Damien Sneed, God bless you. And thank you so much for joining us on HUR at Home Inspiration. And thank you to everyone. And please, as I said earlier, continue to be cautious. Wear your masks, social distance, get your vaccine, and try and remember through these trying times that God is always with us, that we will make it through with God's grace. You take care and please join us next Sunday on HUR at Home Inspiration. Good night. God bless you.